So welcome to the closing, the final work the conference and workshop on forward. We don't have a lot of time, but we uh, it's an occasion to take a look about what forward can do or cannot do. Because of our uh, international audience, it will be in English, but since we are in Belgium, we can respond and take questions and respond basically in any language. Um, I particularly welcome the persons who are not members of the consortium. I remember, I remind to our colleagues who are part of the project that we will meet tomorrow morning for a general uh, meeting. It, so today is really about what the system at the moment it can perform and what part it will perform in the future. So to understand how we can all use uh, use forward. As I expect, we are all more or less persons or institutions concerned with the real life application of this thing. Do not hesitate in asking questions and posing even philosophical questions about the system and about what we plan to do. Um, I just want to say that the project comes to an end in February, actually the end of January 2017, but this, the software and the system will be kept alive after the end of the project by the institutions who will actually use it, and that institutions, apart from the partners that are now on the project, institutions in the future can join forward and use the system as it is. At the moment, the technical, the legal uh, decision tree, there's a horrible thing that they, Davi showed today on the slide, is implemented for 10 countries. Uh, of course, the problem comes when it needs implementation for a country that is not among the 10, but this, of course, is something that can be done, and since we already have 10 different system, the sub-systems, we want to call it like that, developing another one for, let's, let's say, <coughs> Luxembourg is not so complicated. And I stop here and I leave the floor to Levi and Gabriela, who are the only ones who actually know everything about the system. I know absolutely nothing. <laughs> So I was saying that my name is Gabriela Scipione, I work for Cineca. Cineca is the technological partner for our project and was also the technological partner for Agro and Agro Plus projects that we mentioned now this morning. Um, I have to say that every time that um, I go away from uh, my daughters and, I say, and they ask me what are you doing uh, and, uh, and I say okay I have to go to present the system regarding the reform wars and that days of the contributors they always look at me a bit sad and say wow this should be not so they should be very boring no this project <laughs> so and this raises also to me always uh, to me a question how to make the presentation less boring for you no and um, uh, yeah and so the idea that I have today is to alternate some slide presentation in which I will show to you which were the requirements and which uh, was the, um, the design, the, the solution that we found to accomplish the requirements with some demo of the system too. So let's see if um, I succeeded or not in the end. Okay, um, thank you. So, uh, the main goal of the forward project was to enable all the beneficiary of the European of the Euro to assess their status of the audiovisual works that currently are in a sort of rights limbo. So you cannot use, you cannot uh, assess this uh, content because you don't have information regarding rights. And uh, which were the most uh, challenging um, parts of the project? First of all, uh, um, in most member states, uh, we have to remember that when we started the forward project, uh, the directive was not transposed yet into the national law. So we started uh, in uh, 
let's say, designing the system, but also on uh, analyzing the requirement for the, for the system without uh, the national laws, and this was uh, a really challenge. The second, the second point was uh, we had to face with different legal framework among the countries that are involved, at least in this project. They are 10 at the moment, so 10, let's say, legal frameworks. This means also 10 legal, uh, 10 uh, workflows for the system. Okay. And, uh, okay. The trunk, apparently. Uh, the sources that, that can be consulted based on the national laws are a lot, more than 200, and most of them has uh, no uh, API uh, services that they can offer, so they cannot be integrated in the system. And uh, sometimes they don't have also online databases, online services. And uh, another, most, uh, the most important, I guess, uh, challenge or uh, let's say also issue of the project, it was the lack of rights uh, clearing centers for the audiovisual work. We almost touched all these topics uh, this morning, all these uh, challenges this morning. So when we started, we had to face with these, uh, uh, with these points. Um, you see here almost uh, all the analysis, and all, the, all the work that all the partners did during the course of the project. First, with the orange boxes, uh, I highlighted uh, the analysis, the main analysis that uh, the partners uh, um, had to face. First, we, we analyzed the European legal frameworks in each country. Based on this uh, quite deep analysis, uh, we um, work on elaborating algorithms and uh, the system workflows that we should have implemented for each country. And uh, in parallel with this work, we also try to analyze which are the requirements for the system, how the system should work, what, what are the functionalities, for example, that we had to implement. So after these first three analyses, so we, are, we have a basic information to start the design and start the implementation of the project. Um, Today the project is uh, almost concluded. The system, uh, the platform is also in production, uh, so it's uh, it's, uh, it's live. It can be used by the partners that are under vali are validating the the works that they would like to um, clear. So um, I highlighted here the main requirements that we received because it's important, uh, starting from the requirement, to understand why the system was uh, designed as it is. So, uh, the, the, for, the forward platform must be a system to accept the right status for individual words, must provide the possibility to record and maintain the log files <coughs> of the diligent search done by the user, by the beneficiaries, and must be able to export this information back to the partners uh, that maybe wish to uh, ingest the rights information uh, in, the, in their local databases, but it must be also possible to export this uh, information to the European uh, Intellectual Property Organization that uh, Gita presented today. Um, the system must be member state specific and uh, must federate into multiple national clearing centers the information coming from different centers. So, well, if they are available and accessible, of course. Um, the system must be, let's say, semi-automatic, meaning that it must be possible for a beneficiary to always uh, have the possibility to add manually uh, information that are not available to the system, as, as it is, because the sources of information are not uh, perfect, must be able also, another important point, uh, mm, the human intervention is required for the interpretation and evaluation of the data with uh, regards to the right assessment, meaning the orphan status must be always uh, um, declared by a human and not by the system, because there are some legal uh, consequences. No? Uh, so, which are the human interventions that are required in the, in the system? Um, for example, in order to determine uh, for the system the copyright status, uh, it's important to have uh, all the information completed, meaning at contributors level mainly. Uh, 
And very often the, 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 the data that we receive also from the archives themselves that are the film heritage institutions that are involved in the, part, in the project are not completed uh, as Nicola explained this morning. So it could be that some contributors are missing some names, it could be that the dead data are missing, it could be also that the publication and production data are missing. So uh, it must be able to say if a work is anonymous or not. And this is, for example, a kind of information that we don't have in the system because of the system is received. A bit worse is the situation regarding the uh, rights holder determination and also status determination because uh, for the lack of a rights clearing center that I mentioned previously, the system is not able to import this in the information and so it cannot infer nothing about the rights determination and uh, localization, for example. So it must be always possible for a beneficiary to add right orders in the list to uh, say if the, there were a transfer of rights to another person, for example, and uh, to say if uh, this person was located, if the right order was located on the board. Uh, so that, that makes uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, peculiarities of the forward uh, project makes the forward system a platform as a decision support system. And we will see better what does it mean. One of the requirements that we uh, receive is that it must be possible to, um, to integrate in the system existing accessible sources of information. Okay, how we, uh, which are the sources of information that we are moving forward? First of all, uh, the foundation of the data that we can use in forward are the data that are available at the film heritage institution level. Each archive has a database with a lot of information regarding the films and the person that are involved in the films and their roles. So the idea that we had is that uh, having, uh, 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 having 10 archives in the project we ask to them to send to a sort of a central catalog that we call forward catalog, catalog all the works and uh, agents information that they have. So, in order to build a sort of a forward catalog, that is the union of, uh, in some way of all this uh, data, and. Uh, in order to allow the import of data from archive into the system, we used a schema uh, uh, that is a standard schema based on SAM. This uh, allowed also the possibility to become more interoperable with the, uh, among the different archives. So they are now, based on this uh, schema that is a standard, more interoperable with forward, but also more interoperable with the rest of the world because they are using the possibility to exchange data in a standard way. And this is a table uh, that uh, uh, presents the situation. How many film records, how many agent records we receive from each archive. At the moment, in the forward catalog, there are almost uh, 500,000 uh, uh, agents and uh, something like 84,000 works. They, mm, not all the archives decided to export uh, all the database, but just uh, a subset containing uh, the most probably orphan words. Okay, so uh, let's start with the first, uh, first very quick demo of the catalog of the forward system. Okay, I am here uh, as a uh, CAVI. CAVI is the Finland uh, Film Heritage Archive. And uh, when I enter with the user ID and password of Kavi as a beneficiary user, I see that uh, I can see just the portion of the catalog that belongs to my archive. So you see, we have uh, more than 45,000 films and uh, more than 4,000 uh, 4, agents. So what does it mean? So if we go in, inside a visual uh, works catalog, 
You see here on the uh, right side the list of uh, works with the, in grey the name of the contributor of the film. You can uh, access uh, to have a look at one of that, for example. Okay, and um, a beneficiary can see within all these uh, uh, tables also a summary information of the film, the title in particular, who provided uh, Kavi is the uh, source of information, the place of production, year of production, the agent's information. You see uh, there are three contributors, so one of these are a production company, and uh, you can uh, click on the name of the first, for example, and you see the authority file for this, uh, for this uh, person with uh, the possibility to, to receive uh, a lot of information regarding these names. So, if we go in the person catalog, you see all the person that are stored are more than 4,000 4, person and uh, for each of them you can see all the details. You can filter and so on. Let's move on. Uh, let's uh, log out and go in the, another catalog. For example, the Filmoteca Hispanola catalog. Okay, you see here the situation is different because the Filmoteca Hispanola is looking at this whole database and there are a lot of films because they almost decided to export all the films that they have and a lot of agents uh, that they imported in forward. So same situation as CAVI, but different database that I can uh, see. Okay, let's go on with the requirements. Uh, the systems must be uh, member state specific. Uh, so how we build uh, the forward workflow? Oh, um, first of all, we analyze also uh, all the uh, national laws at copyright at all fund status level. And uh, there were several differences uh, in national legislation. For example, um, the legislation can be different because the, the identification of the right holders or the uh, producer can be different from one country to another. Or another example is the terms of protection. Let's think to the uh, exception that there is in France, um, Second World War uh, exception, no? Or the anonymous words, not, not in all countries, the anonymous words are handled or are published words. So a lot of specificity or a lot of uh, national uh, variation. Or uh, also the presumed transfer of rights to the producer is another, um, another national variation. So uh, the idea that we had is to uh, see as forward as a sort of, the forward workflow as a sort of Lego. Uh, we proceed with breaking in uh, into uh, more granular uh, elements, each national workflow. So you, you can imagine that each mm, granular element of a national workflow is a, a sort of a piece of Lego. And uh, if, you, if you understand well, all the uh, common um, uh, piece of information, common um, uh, granular elements of, this, uh, of the, each national workflow, you can create a sort of single workflow in which some piece are applied to a nation and some other <coughs> logical process does not apply to that nation. Um, the, the formal workflow can be configured at different levels. So the logical processes that has to be applied or not for a nation we call branches. Okay. And for each branches it has, must be possible to specify the rules and the parameters that there are within these branches. It's easier to see in this way. This is the forward system. So, after having received uh, information, the system needs to, to infer something. Um, the first step that the forward refer, uh, does is to uh, establish the copyright status, meaning that uh, after this step, uh, a work can be in public domain or under copyright or assumed copyright or undefined if no information are available. Uh, in the third step, this, there is the rights holder determination and orphan status determination. 
And this is, at the end of this third step, uh, we know that the work can be orphan, partial orphan, or not orphan. After that, the system always asks for a validation. So there must be a person that say, okay, this work, this diligent search is valid, and uh, the work, for example, is orphan or is not orphan. Which are the branches that I mentioned? For example, when we uh, start in establishing the copyright status, we, uh, we, are, we identify three branches. First, uh, the non-anonymous works. So meaning that uh, the copyright status are determined based on the contributor, the main contributors that date. But there could be also uh, anonymous work. So this is another branch that is based on different ru uh, rules. A third branch is that if the work was published after being in public domain, there is in some country a protection term of, for example, 25 years. So the work is not in public domain, although it is in public domain. So it's a strange situation, but it happened. Which are the parameters, for example, in the case of the branch anonymous work? The algorithm must, uh, must um, uh, check the publication or production date of the work and must see, must see if uh, more than 70 years has lasted or not. These parameters can be uh, configured by each national country uh, saying, okay, the anonymous branch apply and I have a rule that says that you have to check the publication date only for 30 years, for example. It does not exist, but it could be. For the branch to non-anonymous work, um, thanks to the harmonization of the uh, copyright uh, uh, law at, at European level, we know uh, that the main contributor roles that we have to check are the following one, principal director, author of screenplay, author of the dialogue, composer of music. This means that the system must understand which is the death date of these guys and, and check if more than top tier uh, are lasted or not. All these parameters, 70 years, that they can be changed. For example, in Spain we have a situation where uh, I guess uh, before 1985, if I remember correct, the, the law says that uh, you have to check the dead date for 80 years and not 70. And after 1985, uh, they apply the, the rule of the 70 years. Regarding the third branch, workflow published after being in public domain, <coughs> The parameters are, you have to check the publication date if more than 25 years are, are, uh, are or not. Yeah. Okay. Um, which are the branches and parameters for established orpha status? Um, we asked to each country to uh, let us know which are the right holders role that we have to consider in the rights order determination. Most of the country answered all the creative uh, roles. And in the audiovisual sector means uh, a huge number of uh, person for just one film. Um, another parameter that uh, we, have, we, we receive from each, uh, um, for, from each country is uh, uh, do you have a law that establish a transfer of right to the producer and this is the case, for example, of uh, the Dutch law. Or do you have a, a law that says that you can uh, make a sort of presumption of transfer of right to the producer? So, also this is uh, one case, and which is the year uh, of the law. Um, this means that uh, we prepared uh, for each archive um, a file Excel with all these parameters and branches and each, uh, in each uh, nation we received some configuration parameter. The anonymous brand does not apply and the year is another um, with respect to the, the default one. 
Okay. Um, maybe we will see later it's, uh, it's uh, in the system. Another requirement was that the system must maintain a dilig the diligent searches done in a log file and must be semi-automatic. What does it mean? And now we implemented that. Um, we um, define a set of metadata that the system must collect during the execution of the diligent search and uh, this set of metadata are the essential part of this log file. So every time a beneficial user uh, perform a, a diligent search and modify a default value in the system or enrich the system with new contributors or new details, the system must collect this set of metadata. Who did, what they did, what was the changes that uh, the beneficiary applied and so on, in which date and so on. Um, in order to make the system a bit more automatic, where, where is possible, we apply some business rules. It's always possible, a uh, business rule is highlighted in the system by an orange square box. When a system, the, the user can always change this business rule if for some reason he thinks it's not correct or does not apply to that, uh, to that case. And the system uh, um, highlight this change with a green color. Let's see which are the business rules that the system apply at the moment, uh, which is the workflow that uh, uh, should be applied during the business search. This is an important question because it means uh, which are the legal framework that we have to apply during the diligence search. Is the legal framework of Spain or is the legal framework of uh, Dutch? So this is a uh, business rule that the system uh, tried to guess. In Spain, because uh, there is a beneficial user of, from Spain, for example, that are using uh, the system. Or in Spain, because the production country is Spain. It could be. Another, uh, another business rule is the information, if the work is anonymous or not. The system does not have this information, but can say, if I don't have any contributors in this film, I try to guess that this is uh, anonymous. Maybe it's uh, it's wrong because uh, there are just missing contributors, but uh, mainly it, but could be m most likely correct because if there are no contributors, probably it's anonymous. And so on. We have several of these uh, business rules that we applied, and uh, uh, if uh, we will receive. Uh, uh, more information regarding which kind of uh, um, business rule we can apply, we can improve. Okay, let's uh, have another short demo in the system. We are always within uh, in the Filmoteca Española archive and we search for, uh, okay, a title, for example. Okay, the system finds two titles and I would like to perform a diligent search. You see on a title that has no, okay, no contributor, we will see better. So we start a diligent search from the catalog itself. We are performing a diligent search on this title, we submit. And the system goes right in the copyright status assessment phase that I mentioned previously. And the first step is to determine if the work is anonymous or not, because this um, goes into different branches for Spain. And the system you see uh, in the, in the uh, orange in the orange square applies a business rule. The system says that the work is uh, probably anonymous if no contributor are present, and that's why it's an anonymous. And let's say that is a correct, so it's a sort of validation from the beneficiary here that goes next, in the next step. Here the, the system retrieves all the information regarding the production and publication dates from the database 
and uh, applies a rule, a rule that say work is considered published if at least one of the publication event date exists. This is another business rule. It's always possible for the beneficial user to change it. Uh, and um, okay, you can add other dates in the system. We yeah, we won't do that, but uh, you can. Okay, so the copyright status of this work is quite clear. It was published in 1936, so it's in public domain. It's quite easy. Um, but it's, a, it, it is, it's easy, but it's an anonymous work. It's not a, a non-anonymous work. Uh, okay, let's go on in the presentation. Okay, how we provided the the possibility to integrate in the system existing accessible sources of information. Um, here is uh, some uh, diagrams uh, that um, uh, ACI, the Association of uh, European Archives, uh, did during the project. Uh, for each country, the sources mentioned in the, each national law were analyzed by each archive. We found a totally more than 230 sources of information. So really, to perform a diligent search on 50 something of 30 sources of information is a challenge for a beneficial user. Most of them, they categorize these sources as relevant, very highly relevant, medium and low, low relevance for the diligent search. And uh, they also try to understand if these uh, sources of information pro can provide an online database. So you go in the internet and you find some results or some API. And as you can see, the list of uh, sources that has API that can be integrated is very low. So which was uh, the solution that we found? We define that the sources of information that can be automatically integrated in the system are all the information of coming from the 10 national archives, more the VF. VF is a virtual authority file, international authority file we will see later. Uh, why? Re with respect to the other sources that has on, just an online database, we, um, um, we Follow this uh, this idea. This source of information can be configured, so each nation can say, "This is my law, this is my branches, these are my parameters, this is the sources of information that uh, I am, I have, I have to contact." And so we uh, added uh, these uh, sources of information as link, uh, as URL in the system, and and the beneficial user can always say, "Okay." which are, uh, I will go here, try to find someone, some information in one source and store in the forward system. Uh, let's see what is VF. V VF is an OCLC a service, probably you know, uh, as uh, each, uh, at least the National Library of Belgium knows very well because uh, almost all the national libraries are in VF because they uh, provide all the national authority files uh, to VF. So VF is a sort of uh, combines multiple library archive museum name authority files in one single name authority file. And VF provide uh, uh, their, the, to give the possibility to download the data set they have or all the catalog in a sort of a data common uh, license. Uh, so we used VF uh, um, uh, as external data source to gather more information about cinematographic gadget and make it available in, forward, in the forward system. We will see very soon how. VF has at the moment something like 31 million entries of uh, person and organizations. And uh, we ingested these 31 million records in forward we perform some data quality, so the number of records that we ingested are around 20, 26, 26 million of records. And using the information coming at agent work level from each archive and the VF data, 
we implemented a matching algorithms <coughs> that allow a beneficiary to, to search uh, similar names uh, of person and information on, on all these uh, sources of information. It's also possible to create a sort of same as link between records belonging to different, uh, to different uh, uh, sources of information. Let's, uh, let's see how it works. Okay, let's start um, searching from Grau, for example. Okay. Um, So let's uh, perform a diligent search on this uh, record. Okay, we can start. You see, um, it's a not anonymous work because uh, there are three, seems three uh, names, three contributors. One is the director, that is also the producer, and one is an unknown primary role. Okay, so it's not anonymous. We can go on. And uh, you see here, the system says that the copyright status now, we are in the not anonymous works, uh, are based on the death date of the main roles that, uh, um, that the European administration <coughs> law uh, define. But it could be, for example, that uh, the author of screenplay, music composer, dialogue writer are roles that are not are not relevant for this film because uh, they we don't we don't tell no that does not exist really in the film. So the the system asks okay to uh, the system give the possibility to uh, beneficial user to say the dialogue writer does not apply for this film, and this is the choice detail uh, or better the set of metadata that we. Uh, that we collect every time a user perform a change in the system. So, uh, okay, we say the music composer does not apply as uh, well as the author of screenplay does not apply to this film. So, all these changes done by uh, me are stored in a log uh, file of the diligence search. Now, okay, we can go on. Uh, because we have, we have uh, the just uh, the director has to be considered for the copyright status determination. We have the date date, so we don't have to search for the moment. We go on in the next uh, step. Here the system asks the date of publication, if exist, if it was published, but we don't need for the algorithm. So we can go on and allow the system allow to go on without giving this information. Okay, and say, okay, this is a, a work that is under copyright. All the information and business rules applied are, are stored as results in the system. You see, it is not anonymous because we apply the business rule, the contributors who are, the dates, if we have, and so on. So, now let's go on on the alpha status determination. The system uh, has in the wizard four steps. First, um, based on the configuration that we received from Spain, in this case, we know that there is a law that uh, say there is a presumption of rights transferred to the producer. So based on this law, the archive, the Spanish archive can say, I don't care about the name, all the name of right order that are there because the right order is the pro producer. In this case, the diligent search is very facilitated because it, we have uh, just one producer. Okay. And uh, you see here the system shows just the producer, not the other roles. And uh, let's say, let's go on. And, and we can say here, the system asks if uh, there were some transfer of, of rights from this producer to another producer, for example. It could be. <laughs> Let's say that this is not the case. No, there are no, no rights. The system asks if you located, if, so if you can ask him, for example, to have the permission to use or not. 
let's say that we, yes, we located them. Here the system presents all the sources of information that are mandatory or not based on the national Spanish national law. So for each source of information we can say, okay, I found uh, this producer, I located this producer thanks to the information found, for example, in the first, and uh, I have to say that uh, the second source of information was not relevant for my diligent search. Okay. And so, the, all this information are stored in the log of the diligent search. Okay, now the system is, is, is ready to close this uh, orphan status determination and of course this, the, the work is not orphan because we located the producer. The last step that is a uh, ask to the beneficiary if uh, the beneficiary, the user, has the role of validating uh, um, the, the diligent search is, is it valid, is it correct this diligent search, do you agree, yes, let's say it's valid, you can say something about the, the diligent search done maybe by another user of, uh, of Spain archive, you save this information, okay, okay, thank you. and uh, you can see in the managed submissions uh, where there is the history of all the diligent search done by the, the archive that uh, regarding this title, the copyright status is under copyright, the orphan status is not orphan, the validation status is valid, and the, and the workflow is completed here. The, the diligent search is completed. You can always access to the result, see the log files. What we can show interesting is that uh, for Spain, okay, this is the audiovisual works. <laughs> okay, and uh, we have another tab, audiovisual from works. This is a subset of the audiovisual work for Spain which you see there are just uh, at the moment uh, five works that are um, determined as orphan after a diligent search and that, are, and that were also validated. So if you complete a diligent search and uh, at the end of the validation the, the work is orphan, you can see the orphan registry for, for here for your country, for that country. Um, okay, let's uh, have another demo regarding um, uh, another. And um, uh, let's search for uh, a film named Quique Orcas para un assassino, something like that, that I found quite interesting because it can show you uh, some example of uh, matching algorithms. Okay. Let's start with the diligent search, we submit, it's not anonymous, you know, there are a lot of contributors, a lot of uh, contributors in this film, and it's quite normal for Spain. I don't know why, <laughs> I was surprised. It's not a book, it's a film, you can see here the difference, it's just not an author, no, it's a, it's a film. Okay, interesting, uh, what I would like to show here is that, um, okay, you have a director, and we have also an author screenplay. I know that they probably they are still um, um, they still alive. Also, <laughs> they did uh, die before. Uh, but it's it's interesting that, for example, you do the system does not receive from the Spain archive the date of birth and date of death of Massi Stelio, for example. If we click on the pen, you see the system give, you the give to the beneficiary the possibility to say the death date for this guy is unknown and the system can, if asked this information unknown, can say something, it probably say it's assumed, it's assumed under copyright no? or it's still alive or, and this is a sort of manual uh, enter of data, but the system provides also to the beneficiary the possibility to find the information they are looking for in other catalogs like uh, 
the DIF, the German catalog archive, VF itself, or Cineteca di Bologna, that is the Italian archive. So Massi Stelio is probably the same person in this archive because uh, the date where the date of that are very, very close, just a difference in the day here, the, the date of birth. And um, so this information that are not available in the Spanish catalog can be found automatically by the system in other databases. If you click on VIA, for, for example here, you see the system goes directly to the VIA authority file and you can see that he received uh, a uh, mass state authority file from several countries and some of them have uh, the same date of death and date of birth. So it's a sort of uh, evaluation that uh, Massistelvio in uh, Filmoteca is the same Massistelvio found in VF. In this way you can understand if, if you are just similar names or are the same person. And if we say that, yes, this is a, we can, the, the beneficiary can say this creates a sort of link between these two records because they are the same records and uh, you can, for example, save this date in the, okay, you have to, to explain uh, something to the system that uh, must be recorded in the log file, you see, and the system saved during the diligence search, but also in the Spanish catalog, this information. And the next time that Massistelio compare on another work, you don't have to perform again a diligence search. This is a sort of semi-automatic uh, process that we implemented. Okay. Well, you can stop here. The uh, second part is... Um, we can show, for example, now another example for uh, Cineteca di Bologna. So if we enter in another archive in the forward system, and we find, we, for example, we search for Fidanzate di Carta, it's a... Uh, <laughs> and uh, the system um, finds uh, just the, the record. Okay, let's go on. And, uh, during the diligence search, it's uh, not anonymous. Uh, okay. Uh, let's say that uh, mm, the, we, the system does not allow you to go on because uh, the dialogue writer is missing. Let's say that uh, um, the director Residency is also is also a dialogue writer. You can add the this role to a guy, for example, or you can add a new guy. And you have to say. Okay. Um, okay, there is a there is a, a date that is missing. A date date. I couldn't find any matching. You see, there are no matching in via or in other sources. This is a, you can just have the possibility to the beneficiary has just the possibility to search on all the sources that by law are required. Clicking on on the link, you goes in the online database of these sources uh, and you have to manually search and then store this information in the system. No other way to do that for the moment. Let's say that, uh, let's choose uh, a date uh, uh, I found in Wikipedia, I guess. And uh, he, he died in uh, 2013, month uh, September 9, and day 21st. Let's save. You have to explain, for example, something where you found, if you like, in, in an external database like Wikipedia. And now the system allows you to go on in the next. You don't have to, to insert information regarding the publication status in this case. So we can go directly to the Orpha status assessment. For, for Italy, uh, there were no uh, law that establish a transfer of rights to the producer. 
So the system does not apply the truth that you have seen previously in the Spanish workflow. So probably there were no transfer right to producer at all. Uh, you, you should have the contract to know if there was or not. Let's say that um, this was not the case, so we can go on. Okay, now in Italy you have to search each right holder and uh, in this case the system tried to help you. We don't have information regard, uh, info regarding rights holder. The system say probably are the same contributors that you find during the copyright uh, status determination. So propose to you the same names. You can add other names with other roles and you can remove some of them if you don't if you think it does not apply like the producer not the main contributor because you establish the copyright status based on them so you cannot remove and uh, let's say that um, uh, yeah no don't remove them okay let's go next the system does not put the, con the producer here put on just the contributor names uh, person and let's say that transurance is quite well known uh, director in Bologna my city as a transfer right to yes to his daughter daughter <laughs> let's say new <laughs> the name is Renzi Lisetta I, I discovered that um, a colleague of mine knows her so she is located because uh, we could find we, we had this guy, this girl in the list of uh, right order for this book, uh, for this uh, mm, film. Let's say no other transfer of rights for Renzo Renzi, so yes, completed. Which kind of transfer of right uh, did we have? Inheritance, for example, she's the daughter. You have always the list of sources uh, that you have to consult so you can say, I, cons I consulted, I don't know, Cineteca, Fondazione, Centro Sperimentale di Cinematografia, Found, and so on. You save this information, and uh, you see, so the new right order is not Renzo Renzi, but Lisetta, that is located. Let's say Biagi Enzo, no, uh, there were no transfer of right to another person, Let's say that he was not located. Oh, he's dead. Oh, he was dead? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, uh, that's a reason <laughs> why. <laughs> and I don't know if it's a politician. Uh, uh, and so, okay. So we can go on now. And the system says, uh, of course, that is a partial orphan, under copyright partial orphan. Or from we can validate as usual, or you can also say no, it is not valid because I found some uh, errors in the during the diligence search. <coughs> okay. Mm, now the last things that I would like to mention uh, just uh, it regards the export of all this information because the system has to provide some export functionalities. So we decided uh, to which kind of information the system has as information regarding films that could have been enriched during the diligence search, as information regarding person and organization that could have been enriched too. Um, there are also information after the diligence search about the right status of the film. All these information are useful to receive back to which partner, in this case beneficiary, that may be interested, for example, in uh, ingesting some of this information in their local databases. Um, so, in order to export the data to the beneficiary, we use always the forward schema, the standard schema that we define since the beginning for importing data. So, it's the same schema that we extended with the rights information and we have started also with the possibility to say at field level if a field was enriched in forward and in which date. So 
the local databases can say, oh, this, is, this dead, uh, that date is not available in, uh, in my system, but uh, I, I reached forward so I can import this data. No? Um, so, uh, another possibility that uh, we have is to um, export this uh, information to, at least based also on the law that in the meantime arrived during the course of the work forward project, uh, to export the orphan um, catalog to European uh, intellectual property organization. So we um, uh, we had some contact with uh, with Gita, with the uh, repo, and we decided that for the moment the kind of export is the most feasible to provide is to create an Excel file as uh, the European database needs. So all the information that are in for are exported using the schema defined by repo. So let's have a look at how it works in practical terms. Uh, in the system, it's very, it's very easy. So we have to come back uh, to the usual world. Let's let's do uh, a small search just to reduce, let's say, something like graph. Uh, no, um, basic. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Because it's quite huge. The the it's possible to export all, all the database, of course. So you have here the possibility to, okay. the first one, the first icon there is to export in the forward schema. So, um, I hope that it will open here. It works. Um, this is the XML file based on the forward schema that uh, an archive can uh, take from the system and import in, the, in their local databases. Uh, not yet, I uh, will show that because uh, we have also the other visual of our work at the moment there, are, there is also only this partial of our work in the catalog, in the orphan catalog for it, Italy and you can export with the second icon uh, in, uh, using the Excel file uh, structure we receive from a repo, so you see they usually need to receive several sheets of the Excel data words, data categories, data ISM, data returners, data diligence searches, and so on. Not all of them are um, filled by forward because it's, uh, a, it's a, a specific case, but uh, almost all the information that uh, a repo needs are here. So a beneficiary can decide to take this file and upload in the WIPO system. These are the last functionalities that we implemented recently. We perform, all, very quickly, we perform some also data statistics and analytics on the catalog that we have, that is quite huge. So at the moment we have more than 260,000 uh, million records because we have enlarged a lot the, the size of our forward catalog. And we can perform uh, some data analytics in order to understand, for example, it's not readable for you, but the, um, on, the, on the right part you see the, the small piece of the cake, it's green, it means that the record, the contributors that has uh, that, that date in, uh, in, the, in our catalog. So a very small piece of, of uh, records of agents has a that date. Here are the number of uh, VF record. Here are the numbers of titles um, and uh, works. The number different from the table I mentioned before because this was not uh, updated. This data analytics was a bit uh, um, related with the October situation. Uh, you can, uh, for example, uh, try to understand how many contributors in the work has uh, all the main roles, very few, the bars are very, very few, uh, very mm, thick, and uh, you can see how many partial main roles you have, how many, how many work with no main roles at all, or you can have uh, information regarding how many titles uh, has uh, or does not have producer, 
uh, with our contributor, with data production, with data publication. So you can uh, perform some statistics, some data analytics uh, there. So in conclusion, uh, what I wanted to underline is that uh, Forward was built based on the requirement as a decision support system. Because uh, as to guide the, the beneficiary through the necessary step of the diligent search, uh, the system has support the expert in assessing the right status of the audiovisual works according to the Orphan Work Directive implemented at national level. Um, it, also, it also enabled to register the step taken, the sources consulted, uh, and so on. Maintain the logs, allow you to export data, and lead to continued data enrichment of the situation. But uh, it's important to understand that Forbo is also a platform where you can, it's the it's sort of rights information infrastructure, where for example you can calculate the public domain uh, or uh, under copyright situation of a work and uh, it's also a registry work from work. Um, so uh, this last two, in particular the rights information infrastructure um, it could be exploited in the future by the forward uh, partners uh, in order, for example, after a validation of a number of uh, relevant um, audiovisual works, uh, you, have, uh, you could have there a lot of rights information, or right order information, that you can use for other services that you can imagine in the future. That's all. Sorry if I was too long. but. Uh, it took a while to complete this project. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? I do So, um, to export to EU IPO database, uh, then we have to choose the bulk upload, right? Because yeah. that's where they t receive the Excel yeah. file. Yeah. So, so, in a sense, we would make a, if we just supply one, we would upload a bulk upload because we do uh, an Excel file with one uh, work, or we can gather. Uh, five, ten, fifteen, yeah, hundred. Is yeah. that correct? We yes. Uh, um, at the moment, uh, you have seen the possibility that you have uh, uh, how many way you have to upload the information in the repo. And when I spoke with uh, Gita, in particular, uh, she mentioned that it could have been also it's not ready at the moment in their system perform a sort of integration between, between the forward system and the WIPO system through API. But this is not uh, implemented because forward is not a beneficiary, it's a, a service that some beneficiary can use. So they have to adjust, to adjust their API um, to this case. That is a bit different with respect to that. So, when uh, this will be available, if uh, it is available, we, we can uh, create a sort of B2B API integration. I'd like to uh, uh, extend this question of bulk uploading. Is there any way of keeping tabs on which one we have exported? Because if I have a bulk of 200 titles and I export that and then I do 100 more and I want to only export the 100 I just did, is that easy or possible? Oh, uh, the idea was to, we created some filters in the Orpha Work uh, um, catalog. So you, for example, you can, I don't know, if uh, we thought that uh, based on the date, date uh, when you decide, when you did the last uh, 100 records, uh, diligent search, you could uh, export just that one. But, uh, of course, if you find other filters that we apply, we can apply that we didn't uh, mm, close. Yeah. Okay. Is it uh, 
easy for all the partners to join the forward consortium. Um, you mean other archives? Yeah, other other archives. Yeah. yeah, because uh, the only requirements that uh, we have is that uh, they have to provide uh, their data into the system. So they have to export uh, words and a person's information uh, based on the schema. And I have seen that the partner that uh, did this uh, job during the project had no mm, big problematic in exporting the data. So this is uh, at least technically the only requirement that, uh, that we have. So it's easy, I guess. <laughs> so this part of the answer was for those lucky beneficiaries already active, sorry, active in an already existing, an already forward partner. So this would work for Belgians, for other Dutch, for other Italians. Now, the, for, because the laws are already in the system for these countries. Now the question is now, what for those unlucky countries of Europe, which are not already members? for which we have to write the rules of the game. So, let's say that uh, I am always uh, very positive. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if uh, the national law that does not, is not so much different with respect to all the other 10 countries that we, we analyze, uh, it should not be so so much uh, complicated to define our flow with the actual system that we have for other kind, but it really depends on the initial yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, who owns the data? Who owns the data? This is a typical question from reviewer. <laughs> um, the, the data for me are the, um, are, it's, uh, it belongs to the um, forward partnership, so the consortium that will... Then Which data? My data belongs to me, his data belongs to him. The resulting, the agreement, if we share, if we commonly use the system, we agree that you can, he can read my data and I can read his data to help the identification of orphans. The result of the system, which is a simple answer to the question, is this word often? Yes, no, partial, this is free. Because by definition of the rules of the Commission, this is free information, which by the way will also go on the uh, UIPO uh, website, so this is free information. Our understanding is that there is no production of new data beyond what I my input, which belongs to me as the original input, and so on. There is no... The system does not produce the data beyond this result of... The produce new data. The data which is the input belongs to those who put in, and there is a consortium agreement, and later on a, a forward system agreement, where if we want to participate, you have to share your data, show you you show you yours and I show you mine. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And what about the data that's exported to the EU IPO? Yeah, free. No? They Does that are... automatically become CC0 or something like that? That's a good question because we are required to provide to them without telling us what, what are they. I mean, the directive doesn't say. They say you, you send the information, I don't know if you IPO who's you IPO as an answer to that. So the information I give you, what is it? Is it free? Um, for the moment, we do not offer data export from our database. But it's a question for future. But for the moment, it's not possible to extract data from our database. But this, this, this means we cannot use it, but doesn't mean the information we give you I assume it belongs to everybody because it's written in the law. But it's not written what it is. Is it a difficult base of data? Yes, that is the case. So, those who have done the investment, it's. 
predictor of the Oui, mais là, les, so, the information we send to your IPO. The IPO says we have to tell us mm -hmm. the information about the data, orphan or not. Ok, when I send this data, quand j'envoie ces données, ces données appartiennent à qui Au IPO ou à moi Le producteur de la base de données. Donc, la, 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 la data belongs to the... Une idée individuelle n'a pas de valeur, mais le tout, parce qu'il y a beaucoup de données, c'est un investissement en temps et en argent, c'est le producteur de la base de données. Ouais. Donc, alors, so, if I declare, an, I declare you an orphan, And this metadata belongs to me. C'est à moi. Quand je décrète le, la, la métadonnée concernant le fait que cette œuvre-là est orpheline appartient à moi comme bénéficiaire que je déclarais orpheline. Une donnée n'a pas beaucoup de valeur économique. <rire> ok, les autres peuvent l'envoyer, ils doivent lui faire des recherches. Non, mais ça c'est autre chose. La question est qui a la propriété, parce que ça c'est une question de. Mais le droit de données, c'est le droit des bases de données, c'est le producteur de la base de données. One interpretation is that the future of the data. This protection issue, which is always very complex. Yes. But in my understanding, we have our data protection on the database that we set up, and probably in arrangement of that data. But, but that. Data is, has separate protection normally, and that protection belongs to, to the one who, who owns the data. So there are two layers. One protection will be on yeah. the data, and another one in this arrangement will be of data in the database. So we are not offering extraction of arrangement from the database as it is, but I mean each organization is free to use their own data as, as, as they wish. This would be my legal interpretation. <laughs> Madame would remind us, which I love it, is that this is very nice, we open all our data, but there's privacy and privacy, and so we don't open much. But to be clear, very clear, we are talking about opening up the information about the only data that we produce, my understanding, is that it is an orphan or not. So the orphan, we know. Alors, les oui et les non sont les données dont on parle. Parce que, I'm not publishing the address or the information about the person who owns the rights. Above all, not the address. <laughs> you may be revealing information about inheritance of rights. No, because my understanding of the law mm. is that I provide information about the. the, the, the The, the diligent search stays in my archive and is not going anywhere because I'm liable for that, so I will not publish it. I will provide UIPO IPO, as says the directive, the information if that film is orphan or not. Period. I will not publish the diligent search because, as you pointed out, and Madame pointed out, there there might be liability issues and privacy issues. If you say, that's my granddaddy, I will be happy to show you the information I have in the log, which is kept by the forward system, or written by hand by me, because the alternative is either to write it by hand or use forward. And I say, so, look, look, this is what I found. If you show me that it is your granddaddy and you prove that your granddaddy did that, Then it goes off the UIPO database. But I would not publish the information about your granddaddy that he divorced twice and ended up with whatever in Thailand with a girl because I wouldn't. Yeah, I found out. I studied the case before. But it goes off privacy, liability, blah, blah, blah. Issues included the fact that none of that is true, by the way, about your granddaddy. <laughs> Am I correct? Because it's a funny world where we have to open up databases, but we can't. Uh, I have a very simple practical question. Are you positive uh, that everything in the use of this database is self-explaining? Or uh, maybe uh, if I had trouble to fill in certain fields of the database correctly, uh, would there be like uh, helping information in the background or 
how to find answers? Um, we try to, uh, uh, let's say, to, to guide the user with some information, like to, uh, what is missing, for example, is always uh, explained in the green boxes next. Uh, um, but uh, I think we could uh, provide better some guidelines and uh, also improve a bit the usability of the system with some information. So uh, we will have just one or two months more to do that, uh, but uh, on the other, otherwise we will continue the uh, next uh, uh, future for the forward system. So um, we, we try to do that at the present, in the present platform and uh, we will improve based on the, some validation that we are receiving now from the, from the, the partners. Uh, so we will do that uh, within January, and what is not possible to do within January, we will do, I hope, in the future, after the end of the project. I must say one thing, that unfortunately the number of beneficiaries is small per country, and the number of people using it within the beneficiary is small. So at the end of the day, if you're investing in this wire to, to get into the system, Probably the easiest is just the training because we are talking about very few people. The software is, just, and the law is designed for very few institutions to be able to use the orphan works, so to use the software. So the, what I'm saying is that we are not talking about Adobe. We are talking about something where we expect to have 10 copies installed in the country, not more. So the, at the end of the day, one afternoon, we will be training for the whole staff. You know I mean? Still, we will produce a... I think the plan is to publish a... When we finish with the final validation, so that we have a stable, a final product to produce a, a handbook or a manual, so that most of the answers are there. And then, of course, there will be a structure to support the system, which probably means questions can be asked. But it's not very complicated. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I would just continue and say that you need to be somewhat of a professional user to use it. It is, it's an assisted uh, process, and and I would say that you need to have reasonable understanding of the algorithms that lie behind the different calculations that take place, and also. Uh, of course, since you are going to make personal assessments uh, on rights uh, during the process, so there's going to be some, some specific points in the process where you or the person in your institution that's uh, responsible for declaring something an orphan based on um, the assisted search and whatever other search you've done. Uh, as Nicholas says, it's going to be relatively few people, it's going to be um, and I, I don't see the system being, what should we say, uh, at the level of an Outlook uh, platform, <laughs> for instance, right? I mean, it, it is a, a specific, uh, specific system for a specific purpose. And, and until, until you learn what the, the quirks of it uh, are, then, um, then you do sort of say, why doesn't it allow me to go on from here? Uh, so, so yes, um, we'll see. Hopefully, we get lots of users and and more usability uh, investment possibilities. Um, but um, but I mean, there there's no doubt that it's not going to be a system made available to every European citizen. It's going to be for professional archival staff. Thank you. I just had one thing, that also, I think you said that it's not deciding anything. The system is not deciding anything. The system is, at the end of the process, presents you facts and leaves you with a choice. Why? Because as I said before, there is no theoretical limit to the effort to demonstrate the absence of something. Demonstrate the existence of something is easy because it has an end. When you dis demonstrate the existence of, a, of an 
an author, it's there. The, demonstrating the absence of an author is impossible. So the diligent search is diligent because at one point it stops. So we search the, all the mandatory list. We send an email to SSD who responded, never heard of the guy. We check the literature and the newspaper and blah, blah, blah. That's where we are. At that point, you or somebody in your organization might say, okay, reasonably and diligently, we stop here and we say it is an orphan. Or we don't have enough information to say it is an orphan, so it is not an orphan. Period. So in this sense, there is a two levels. There is a level of input of information where it is not there. For which I would say the level of requirement is a good cataloger that says I found this information in this, for example, in this book or in this uh, list or in this newspaper from 1925. I found it, I put it in there, and that's it. But at the end of the process, there is a somebody with, who takes the responsibility of saying this is an offer because it is a legal responsibility that I as a director of an institution, take on myself and we delegate ultimately to somebody else, but at the end of the day, it's my responsibility because if we are sued for a unprecise amount of money, because the directive doesn't say how much, they can come back to us for one gazillion euros for using a film online for free. So, this implies that a, a, a informed decision is made which makes the system non-automatic by definition. It will automatize as much as it can until the big red button and the big red green button. Until then, then it stops and then you have to press it. So the person using the system must be able to evaluate and assess the information that the system provided in order to make a, uh, a decision. You see what I mean? Because that what the, 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 the good thing about the directive is that it puts responsibility on us. The bad thing about the directive is that it puts responsibility on us. <laughs> and there is no way out of it. We have to take responsibility and they inform the decision. And by the way, each institution can take different informed decisions. So, so that's why we, we, the system takes you by hand and takes you to the end and say, okay, now, and now you say yes or no. I can't marry this woman for you. You go now and make a decision. By God's sake, decide yourself. And that's what the system does. Anna Maria, Two, uh, two questions. First, I saw that there were uh, in the film catalogs there were a different amount of films for each partner. Uh, so I imagine that uh, you can put more films in the film catalog as long as you find yeah. uh, other films that you want. Uh, you, you are interested in putting in the system. Yes. Uh, or doubt. Yeah. Stupid question. Okay. And the second is. Uh, as the project is going to be over soon, how do you think to support and maintain the system? And have you thought about anything? Mm. Yes, the answer to the thing, the real answer, we can no, upgrade. To the first? Uh, yes. To the first? To yes. the first, but it's also that we can, you can decide what you upload. In our case, I don't think we uploaded everything. I think we uploaded a subset of our database for the things that realistically, for example, we didn't put Visconti uh, in that list because it's pointless. So we put the Belgians in the moment where more realistically we have orphans. Uh, we didn't have La Promessa. We know who made La Promessa, who owns the rights. But we, so we, you can update, upload an, a subset if you want or you can upload a, the whole set of whatever you have. Yeah, just to, to add. Um, it, it makes sense that uh, an archive decides to send us a subset of works because maybe just a subset of your catalog are, uh, are orphaned, no? But uh, it makes 
a lot of sense to upload in the system almost all the agents, means person, organization that you have, because you cannot say which of them are in the maybe 10 records of titles that you have. So this is almost the criteria that we used and that I suggest. Concerning the future of the system, as I said, apart from the fact the project is not over, apart from the fact we have a meeting of partners tomorrow, there is a, um, there is a, uh, there will be, uh, the system will have relatively low cost of maintenance to the point that the participating archive will reasonably will have a reasonable price tag to, to participate. So the translation, if I want to use the system, I will pay a fee to maintain the thing. The, how costly it is depends on, on, on the kind of, of uh, uh, the, the, the minimum, keeping it alive, or expanding and adding cool graphics and stuff like that. That would be a different cost. Um, and this is the way it will guarantee the existence and the functionalities. The same will apply to institutions who want to join. The institutions who want to join, as I said before, for those who come from countries, unless we find a way to, fund, to find money to pay for the adaptation to the uh, Swedish, uh, I don't know, to another law that we don't have, but in the case of the Cetega Nazionale, they can take advantage of what Bologna did in terms of the legal framework of Italy. And the cost, so to join, is the fees. There is no extra tailoring and adaptation. For those who join from other countries, there would be a problem of adaptation because they will have to tell them and they have to implement the laws of their countries and the sources in their countries and blah, blah, blah. Beyond that, then there is a fixed fee that is at the moment very, for what we projected, very reasonable. I suppose that one beneficiary can add information about uh, not, not with the work that has been implemented in the system by another uh, beneficiary, is that so? For instance, alternative title or more agents or things like that? Um. Um, as uh, the owner of the data uh, are the archives that provided, uh, what we define at, uh, at the moment in the system is that uh, an archive, can, a beneficiary, can uh, read and uh, change data belonging to him. They can also read data belonging to other, per other beneficiary, but they cannot uh, make uh, changes, enrichments, or uh, copy completely the records, no? So that's uh, the rules that at the moment are in the partnership. But it could be improved, of course, could be changed. For instance, if, if I found relevant information concerning a non user work that has been put, put in by my state, for instance, uh, and this information seems to be relevant to decide if the work is over or not over, etc. Okay, if uh, this is a kind of information at level of agents, uh, the system uh, allow you immediately to, to see, and also title, so an archive can see the data of another beneficiary, copy part of this data in their record, and so on. This is uh, possible, yes. But you, what is not allowed that you change data of another beneficiary because, of course... Uh, yeah, it's not a question of changing, but adding information. Adding information. Which, is, which could be relevant to decide at the end. Okay, so... So... For instance, if, 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 a, if a Spanish original work is... Because it's anonymous, mm -hmm. so this all change says at the end, you have to choose, probably it's this or that. If I have relevant information saying no, it's not an enemy because I know that, or I have information concerning a certain person who worked on the film, etc., uh, which is which is not only relevant but which is correct, mm -hmm. no. and with, which would change the status of the work. Uh, uh, okay. So the way now that it, the, the system allowed to do that is that the beneficiary provides information and the other beneficiary can 
use that information to arrange. Put it in this. That's a uh, way. Okay. Did you talk about co-production? Uh, um, at the moment, we 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 did validate the yeah, the co-production, but. Uh, mm, the, the rule should be that if you have a co-production, for example, co -produ a work produced in Italy and another in uh, Germany, you, uh, the beneficiary that is performing the diligence search has to perform two diligence searches. One based on the Italian national law and one based on the German national law. So uh, at the end, the results are compared. And if a work is orphaned in just one of these two countries, by law, it's a... Uh, so that's uh, that's the way we manage the co-production at the moment in the system. That would I would call multi-country search, diligent search, because it's not just a production; it's also about authors. Carmine Gallone one day goes to England and starts making sexy movies for uh, middle-aged Brits uh, going for holidays in Italy. In the meantime, the Italian, of course, half naked, the same songs, uh, Neapolitan songs. He made a couple, of three, four, five things like that. It's very funny because the Italian is a male and the Brit is a woman. Both, of course, so she goes for holidays alone in Naples and find love. So Calone is Italian. He makes, to, makes this film in the UK. The, the production is UK. Part of the actors are Italians. The film is shot on location in Italy. So the cast and crew is a complete mess between UK, France, some Europeans, and, uh, uh, and Italy. The, this is a UK production, but searching the, the information about Galone or the semi-naked Italian actor is in UK doesn't make any sense because you will not find the information. That's why I would call it a multi-country uh, digital search. And the system allows you to search for Gallone in the Italian silos, in the Italian workflow, and for the production in the UK, and so on, depending on actors, on, sorry, actors are irrelevant, to script, script play or whatever on, author we have, and the producing company, of course. In which case, they were co-production, so you search for both into uh, trees. The system allows you to to, how to say, to lock together the two searches so that actually you, you go in parallel, at the end you have answers and then you compare the answers and you come to a decision. This can be multiplied by 28, theoretically. I mean, we can, we can do many parallel searches for different parallel countries until we have uh, a result. And of course, as if there is one result that we found an author CMO in England or, 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 or a Sassede or somewhere else, one is enough to declare the work non-orphan or partial orphan. Is orphan only if it is orphan everywhere, in every country that was searched. Right? Yep. More or less. So here is the end of this uh, forward presentation. Uh, we invite you, if you dare, to a drink upstairs at the sixth floor. And you can also have a visit of the digit, uh, digitalization uh, part of the Royal Belgian Library, if you want. So thank you for participation. Uh, we're going to meet some uh, our partners, uh, forward partners, uh, tonight at first for fun and uh, then tomorrow at 9.30 and work package leader, it's intern communication, sorry, uh, we have a meeting at uh, 5. Thank you very much.